Thank you, Karen, for those beautiful songs of prelude to focus our attention on worship this morning. It's a beautiful fall morning out there, uh, crisp and cool. It was interesting this week, it seemed like the colors just became vibrant overnight. Monday, the tree leaves in front of our house seemed to be green, and by Tuesday, Thursday, it was a brilliant yellow, and I think we're experiencing that. So it's a beautiful fall, crisp morning, enjoying God's creation. I want to welcome everyone here to our worship service at Alive Church Ephrata, uh, to everyone here in the sanctuary, and also those who are joining us by uh, live stream. We want to welcome you with a warm welcome as we spend time together in fellowship and worship. We seek to worship God today. And as a live church effort, through Jesus Christ, we want to offer hope, life, and love to those that we come in contact with and greet each day. So again, welcome in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, as far as announcements, see, in your uh, mailbox, there are two things I want you to be aware of. First of all, the bulletin. This, today it's bluish. Not bluish, it is blue. Uh, and please read through any of the um, things that would pertain to you. Um, and also there is a handout, a gold handout, talking about our offering for next Sunday, our Thanksgiving service. There will be a Thanksgiving second offering. There will be a basket available for you to to give towards that. So please read through what is the project we're giving to. The Mission Commission has chosen to support YWAM Lancaster's initiative called Ending Bible Pro Pro yeah, Poverty Now. And it's an initiative uh, to get the Bible translated and also out to those who do not have Bibles. And so again, read through the details of that. And it struck me as I was thinking about this, at our church at Oak Street, do you remember what was above the pulpit on the wall behind the phrase that we had up there? Thank you. Thy word is truth, which means the word of God is important to us. And so I think this is a perfect project for us to help support to get that word out, the word of truth out to the world. So again, please read through that. Next week, there will be two baskets uh, for offering, our regular offering, and then our uh, special Thanksgiving offering. Also, I just wanted to highlight, uh, there is an update from Andrea Martin in there as well. Please read through that to see what's happening in her life. Um, and as you came in, there, you should have received or picked up, or there was a thing that says, take one. Um, so I don't, if you do not have one, raise your hand. Ken has extra. Are we able to? Okay. Up front here, there's one. Uh, it's a test. No. <laughs> I was going to say it was going to be a test for the sermon, but um, David said, no, don't say that. Uh, it's a good resource. Uh, what he'll be speaking about, we as a leadership team this winter had our retreat. They were resource, and we received this. I, I found it very helpful. So I'm looking forward to David's uh, input this morning. So, and just a reminder of the giving of our tithes and offerings. You can uh, place your offering in the basket between the doors as you leave the sanctuary, uh, or you can drop it by the office throughout the week, um, or go online and through our website or through the Tithely app, you can give of your tithes and offerings that way as well. So again, read through all what's in the bulletin for you. At this time, we'll do our monthly verse. Uh, I believe last week I called it our September verse, and on the slide it had October. I think we finally got it now. It's November. If you want to please stand, um, these things happen. <laughs> yeah. So, November's Bible memory verse, we will say the reference, the verse, and then the reference. Please join me. Philippians 2, 14 to 15a. 
Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you might be blameless and innocent children of God. Philippians 2, 14 to 15a. You may be seated. For a call to worship, I want to read a Psalm of David, Psalm 63, verses 1 through 7. This is a Psalm that David wrote while he was in the wilderness of Judah. Uh, And so listen to what he writes, and I think it's a, a great way for us to focus our time this morning of worship. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 7. O God, you are our God. Early will we seek you. Our soul thirsts for you. Our flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So we have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. Our lips shall praise you. Thus we will bless you while we live. We will lift up our hands in your name. Our soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And our mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When we remember you on our bed, we meditate on you in the night watches because you have been our help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, we will rejoice. This time I invite uh, Cherie forward with the children. As you know, we've been doing the Christmas, children's Operation Christmas Child. And so we're going to come forward. These are the boxes that are filled and ready to go. And we're going to have a prayer blessing with the children. And Cherie's going to give a little bit of a... Okay. We're going to have the kids... Blue. Oh, oh, there we go. Um, we're going to have the kids stand behind the boxes. That way, if, you know, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas want to take a quick picture, we're good for that. Somebody please do so I can put it on the Facebook page. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We hauled them out of nursery, um, but that's okay. So before I talk about Operation Christmas Child, I am going to do a little uh, boost for the Christmas program. They have a few insider information pieces, but other than that, um, it will be on December the 19th at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Come and enjoy the Christmas spirit. They'll be singing. They'll be a good bit of laughter, and it really is a no-stress program. It's going to be a good time, so I hope to see everybody there. For those that are watching um, online, we will not be streaming the program, so you have to be here in the sanctuary. If that's a problem because you're concerned with COVID or whatever, there will be space up in the balcony. You're welcome to join us there. So on to Operation Christmas Child. We started with 62 boxes. At this point, and I know that some of the Peniel folks took some as well, we have 51. Um, I am blown away by the generosity of this congregation and just by everybody involved. The kids are a little bit excited about it, but um, what happens with these boxes is as you know, you guys have filled them and we will be praying over them And then I'm just going to read what's here. The children that get the boxes get the opportunity to be enrolled in a 12-week follow-up program. And it's a discipleship program. They will be taught about Christ. That also gets carried home to the parents and the family members. In some households, obviously, there's multiple generations in a household. So Christ gets shared in a larger community. And they also get presented with the opportunity to make that personal decision to have Christ become part of their life. Um, families and churches or churches do grow. New churches are started. And then communities, of course, are transformed. And considering the climate today, politically, and everything else, that's definitely something we need to do. Um, if, for some reason, you haven't participated and would still like to see me afterwards, I have forms. You can donate financially 
to cover the cost of mailing the boxes. It's $9 to mail each of the boxes. Now, some po folks have included that, some haven't, and that's fine either way. Um, but we can even pay beyond and over the top of what we've provided as far as boxes. And I think that would be a blessing to Samaritan's person, as obviously to the children that are going to receive those. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thank you. Isn't this exciting, children? You get presents at Christmas, right? So some children will be receiving these. What's that? Some? Yeah, and so we're going to help on that. So we want to have a, yes, a beautiful. We want to have a prayer, a blessing for this. Is that, can we do that? Would you? I'd like to have a prayer. Would, would any of you like to say a, a prayer? Would you, okay, we got two volunteers. I'm going to go ladies first, and then, so, just a nice short prayer. Um, okay. You forget, that's okay. Jesus understands, and you? They find it. Okay. You remember now. You got to be nice to God. Um, when God be nice to you, you pray God, pray that we will, um, pray God that the people don't get, the people that get, don't get presents, get presents by the presents we made up here. I can't top that. Yes, thank you. That, Dear Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity and the children who are a part of this and the blessings that they are for us as a congregation. And for those who have given of themselves in preparing these boxes as they go out, we pray a blessing upon each box. And as the child and family receives each box, that you will bless them as well and that they will receive the uh, message and story of your love through the Christmas story, the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. That's what Christmas is all about. And so we just thank you for the opportunity. It's an act of worship for us to you to give to those who do not receive presents on a Christmas morning. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. We'll leave them here. We'll get them later. Please join me in our time of pastoral prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we do come before you this morning thanking you for who you are, the blessing that you are to us, the blessings that you've given to us. We just thank you. And we thank you for your love for us, an unconditional, unending love that you've given to us. And forgive us for those times when we maybe have taken it for granted, your love for us. And there's times that we've forgotten about you or taken you for granted, dear Lord. Forgive us for those times. And we just thank you that we have the opportunity to have conversations with you, to have prayer with you. You've, you've invited us into that. You want that from us. And so this morning we just come before you uh, with our prayers of petition and praise and concern, dear Lord. Because we know you promise to answer our prayers, and we by faith believe that our prayers are answered in your timing, dear Lord. And so, dear Lord, we just want to lift up to you this morning those who are experiencing uh, health concerns at this time, recovering from either a hospital stay or a surgery or uh, the COVID or whatever it may be, dear Lord, we just pray a blessing upon each person that they will feel your presence, first of all, your strength and your healing touch upon them. And we pray for the families and friends who surround and support each of those persons as well and the staff who helps if they're at a facility, dear Lord, I pray a blessing upon those helping hands. 
And so may you speak into each of their lives to bring comfort and peace. And also for those who have experienced uh, the death of a loved one, dear Lord, we pray a blessing upon them as well, that your peace that passes all understanding will be with them and guide them and support them during their time of grieving. And so, yeah, we just lift up all those health concerns, whether it's physical or emotional, whatever it may be, dear Lord, the stresses that we encounter in life. We come to you for that stress relief. We come to you for those answers and for those healings, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we just continue to pray for your guidance and wisdom as we have conversations between ourselves at Live Church Ephrata and Metzler Mennonite Church, dear Lord. We want to be obedient to your leading and guiding, dear Lord. We feel that you're stirring something new, but we want to do what is correct and, and right and in your timing. And so give us the wisdom, the clarity, the understanding of where this all leads, that we will be obedient to what you're calling us to. And so we just bring that before you this morning. And dear Lord, now I just lift up the rest of our time of worship before your throne. May you be with us. We know you're here with us through your Holy Spirit. May your spirit guide us and direct us as we sing, as we hear from your word, dear Lord, this morning. Stir our spirits, stir our hearts, that if there's anything new that we need to come away with, that we are open to that, dear Lord. And so we just pray a blessing upon each person here this morning and also joining by live stream, that this will be a time of worship and uplifting praise to you this morning. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. I invite everybody to stand as we worship together. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth, that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, but we're song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made when it's all about you it's all about you jesus king of endless worth no one could express how much you deserve though i'm weak and poor all i have is yours every single breath I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself it's not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus Worthy is the Lamb who 
was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. and rainbows of living color flashes of lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Filled with wonder struck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath of living water, such a marvelous mystery. Yeah, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And I will see how great, how great is our God. to age he stands and time is in his hands beginning and the end beginning and the end the God had three and one Father, Spirit, Son the Lion and the Lamb Lion and great is our God. Sing with me how 
great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Gracious Father, how great you are. We sing of your greatness, and we thank you again for who you are. At times we feel limited in our words, in our music, but you know our heart, you know our spirit, and we want to give it all to you because of your greatness. It's overwhelming, but yet we understand that you love us, in this greatness, and we just thank you. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I invite Dave, David McAdams. He's a counselor for Upward Call, and his office is right back there. They use some space here as part of their counseling, and David's been here before, and he's here this morning to bring us the message, and explain that wheel that we received. So, Amen. blessings, Dave. Okay, thank you so much. So it is great to use this facility to help others uh, heal and become whole and whatever they're going through, whatever struggle or concern they may bring um, through those doors in the prayer room. And so I, again, appreciate uh, the use of uh, your facility and Upward Call is greatly uh, grateful. Um, I was thinking through the sermons I have listened to, and I can't remember a sermon I have heard that addressed the subject of emotions, like I mean, specifically, like yes, they we deal with emotions all the time, and I'm sure, but I mean, specifically honed in on the area of emotions. And I'm curious, with a show of hands, uh, how many of you remember a sermon that was given specifically um, on the area of emotions? Anybody? I got one, maybe. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's good. But we didn't, so many of us, so how, about 60, 70, I don't, I'm not sure. So one of us. <laughs> so I believe emotions needs a say. It needs a voice. <laughs> and so I plan on doing that this morning. Um, yeah, if you've heard a sermon on emotions, I imagine the sermon painted emotions probably in a negative light. An illustration in the sermon might have gone something like this. I'm just imagining. Uh, a man goes out and impulsively buys a truck because he feels good and excited, thrilled about buying this new purchase. The truck costs an extensive amount of money. The man's wife was not told about the purchase. Oh, this is not good, huh? Um, the man's wife didn't approve of the purchase. She was furious at finding out. They end up fighting and say things they wish they hadn't. <laughs> and now the couple is in a great deal of trouble relationally. 
in a great deal of trouble financially. Uh, the man later regrets his purchase, is deeply depressed when the truck is repossessed. Oh. Thus, the man and woman's emotions got the best of them. Sermon illustrations like this give emotions a bad rap. Emotions then may be seen as dangerous, inappropriate, unacceptable, and unspiritual. Thus, many a Christian has learned to avoid emotions or distract themselves from feeling, feeling something uncomfortable. Distractions is a well-used defense tool to avoid emotions. Lois Cheney from God is Not a Fool, that, that she wrote, writes, feeling blue, buy some clothes. Feeling lonely, turn on the radio. Feeling despondent, read a funny book. Feeling bored, watch TV. Feeling empty, eat a Sunday. I think everyone would like that. Right? Uh, um, feeling worthless, clean the house. Feeling sad, tell a joke. Ain't this age wonderful? You don't gotta feel nothing. Thus, Christians in general, and just maybe a Mennonite or two, have been prone to avoid emotions. Maybe. In fact, many, many a Christian has been told not to use their emotions or have emotions, period. I hear all too often in a session, maybe right through these doors uh, in other places where I do therapy, I don't like emotions or I don't have feelings. I hate to break it to anyone here, but you have emotions and you have feelings. Whether you want them or not, you have them. Many a man will sit in front of me and be unable to identify their emotions. Now, why men? I'm picking on the men. I'm sorry. Let's face it. Men in our society are told not to feel. They're told not to feel. They may think, but not feel. So they are told not to cry, not to feel pain. So they are told these things, and yet the one emotion that men are allowed to show is anger. So they're allowed to show one emotion and anger in our society. Not too crazy, but they can, they can show that. On the other hand, women are socially and culturally allowed more often to experience a wide range of emotions, normally, not always, while they are told not to express anger. Think of it this way. If a man expressed anger in society, he would get more sympathy than a woman would who displayed anger at work. She might be fired. A man would be reprimanded, most likely. I teach clients in sessions that God has created them in the image of God, and being image barrier, bearers, bearers, they are created with Emotions. We are all created with emotions. All emotions are valid. I believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have emotions. That's kind of revolutionary. You might not have heard that. Maybe you have. But the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all have emotions. Again, I believe the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit have emotions. Being created in God's image is not just rational or relational, it's emotional. Being fully human then involves emotions. God called emotions good then. He created them. What makes emotions sinful is inappropriately using them or what we do with them. So we can use them inappropriately. Due to the fall of humankind in Genesis, our emotions can get twisted, are unhealthy, ill-mannered, rude, and 
hostile. Let's look at Scripture. Let's see, to see if Jesus, who is God, made flesh, uses emotions. More importantly, I want you to pay attention to see how he uses his emotions. Now, I'm going to jump around because there's different emotions that he uses in the Gospels. So I'm going to stay in the Gospels uh, for the most part here. And um, so we'll begin with John 15, 11. We will start with Jesus expressing joy. And John 15, 11, it says this. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be, be, be complete or made full. Jesus' joy is seeing his followers follow his heavenly Father in love. Obedience for Jesus gave him great joy. So there's joy. Jesus has the emotion of joy. Well, let's, let's uh, go to Matthew. Matthew 4.10. Exhaustion or being tired is often um, is, is another emotion Jesus experienced. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he was in the wilderness, right? The 40 days he spent in the wilderness being tested. Matthew 4.10 reports, angels came and attended him. Why? He was tired and exhausted from the emotional fight with the devil, hungry, and he spent 40 days fasting. Jesus also, in his ministry, left the crowds to spend time with his father. So he got time to recuperate and did some soul care for himself. Anger and disgust are other emotions we can identify Jesus using. John 2.15 asserts this. Jesus made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple, all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. Jesus was upset. He was disgusted at the Jewish leaders and used his righteous and just anger. For God's people were being cheated in his temple. That was to be used for prayer. In another example of anger and disgust, we find Jesus in Matthew 23, 30, 33, speaking to the religious leaders, declaring this, You snakes, you brood of vipers, will you escape being condemned to hell? I guess Jesus got angry, huh? Sorrow, sadness, agony were also experienced by Jesus when his dear friend Lazarus died. John 11, 33, 35 states, when Jesus saw Mary weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Soon after that, Jesus wept. In Matthew 26, 37, and 30, 38, we find Jesus in Gethsemane before his crucifixion. The text remarks, Jesus was sorrowful and troubled. He was sorrowful that Jesus says his soul has sorrow to the point of death. So he became sad. Yes, Jesus was sad. Now, when we see Jesus in Gethsemane, we see Jesus in the light of anxiety or fear as well. Different interpretations say he was in distress, he was overwhelmed, he was anxious. This is, comes from Matthew 26, 39. And it mentions, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Not as, not as I will, but as you will. Yeah. Jesus appears to be grappling with that, with what is, it is to come, which, which is fear. 
fear of imminent danger and thinking about his future experience of death. Jesus experienced anxiety in his body so much that Luke, in his book, in the Gospels, chapter 22, 44, says that his sweat was like drops of blood. Well, if I'm sweating drops of blood, or like drops of blood, it's probably because I'm pretty anxious. So in his body, he was stressed, and he was tense and anxious. In John 19, 26, Jesus' mother was near the cross. When Jesus showed compassion and empathy to his hurting mother, while Jesus was dying, he told John to take, into, take his mother into his home. Jesus didn't want his mother to be, to be lonely and to hurt without someone who was there with her. Jesus also experienced the hurt for many, so he healed many from sin, disease, he also experienced hurt for those in Jerusalem in Luke 19, 41 through 44. Jesus cried over the city because he was hurt by their unwillingness to see their sin. So, there's a quick, brief look at Jesus experiencing emotions. Jesus clearly uses emotions in his life, ministry, and death. His experiences, he experiences them without sin and experiences them appropriately and acceptably. Jesus displays to his followers how to tolerate and regulate his emotions in a positive manner. We too can experience emotions appropriately and positively, yet we know all too well using emotions negatively. We know that, and sinfully. They can get the best of us, can't they, our emotions? They can, go, they can be inappropriate and go awry. They can be rudely, be used rudely and impolitely. When used wrongly, they can be devastating and have an impact that lasts for generations. Charles Swindell tells us this story in his book, Standing Out. A young boy lived with his grandfather in the Swiss Alps, often just to hear the sound of his own voice echoing back to him, he would go outside, cup his hands around his mouth and shout, hello, and up from the canyons, a reply reverberating, hello, hello, hello. One day, the boy seriously misbehaved, and his grandfather disciplined him. Reacting violently, the, the child shook his fist and screamed, I hate you! To his surprise, the rocks across the mountainside responded in kind. I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! And so it is in the family. We get in return exactly what we give. It all comes back. Incredible echoes mirror our actions to an emphatic degree, sometimes in greater measure than we give. We are, the results are often embarrassing and tragic. Tennyson said, our echoes roll from soul to soul and grow forever and ever. Yet just as we can experience a negative impact in our family, we can teach our family members appropriate and acceptable ways to use their emotions. We can use our emotions as Jesus used his. What would God say about us avoiding our emotions or saying we don't have emotions? God, I believe, would want us to think of our emotions as a gift. They are gifts, just like our intellect is a gift. Ignoring our emotions, I would say, is a detriment to our health, our wholeness, and our life, personally and in our community. Why? 
Why would I say that? Because when we avoid our emotions, we suppress, we restrict, we repress them. We can do this so we don't have to feel our emotions. But like anyone knows, emotions don't stay hidden forever. Once internalized, they come out. Think of a ball held under the water. Think of that ball that's held under the water. It will eventually be forced with pressure to pop out of the water with great force. Thus, our emotions also will pop out in explosions and come out sideways. Sideways emotions can be seen in the way we respond to someone's criticism, contempt, defensiveness, blame, withdrawal, or attack. They come out sideways when we self-medicate in addictions to porn, work, gambling, drugs. They will come out. Our emotions need not be rejected, pushed under the rug or the carpet, if you will, or forgotten. We may think we can sidestep our emotions, but, but they will echo back. They will come back, just like that boy in the canyon in the Swiss Alps. They'll come back into our lives and do greater damage if we don't learn to regulate and tolerate them. What then do we do with our emotions? What do we do with these gifts? How can we use them appropriately? What does that look like? What does it look like to use them appropriately? I tell my clients that just like they have intelligence to think, they can have emotional intelligence intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's own emotions. So to be aware of, control, and express them. And to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. A person learning their emotions must realize they have them. And and so um, they start to identify them and the desire to use them and manage them. Emotions, I heard recently, are used to inform our present reality. So we're going to inform our present reality. Again, emotions are used to inform our present reality. I also believe our present emotions can link into our past experiences and as mentioned before, our emotions can impact our future. Many of us, even if we are aware of our emotions, are deficient in how to handle and control them. I have given each of you a handout. Uh, one, and one, on one side of the handout is what we call our feeling wheel. Now go ahead and, and look at that. It's, a, it's a, what's called a feeling wheel. You might have seen one of these. The feeling wheel works this way. In the center of the circle is a small circle of basic emotions, happy, sad, disgust, anger, and fear, and surprise. And then from there, these six emotions are like a piece of pie or pizza. Let's take sad on the wheel. If you look at sad, sad has a set of emotions that are in the, sl in the slice of sad. In that slice, you have bored, lonely, and, and then further out, empty, isolated, remorseful, and so on. They are all part of the sad family. Thus, each of the six basic emotions work this way on the wheel. Now, you may say, I am feeling sad. Your sadness has emotions underneath your sad feeling. I don't want to confuse you, but your emotions have emotions. <laughs> so one emotion will lead to another emotion. You might say, well, I'm feeling this, but guess what? There's some other emotions attached to it. A person who is sad can also be feeling despair, isolated, 
powerless and use other slices of the circle, other circles on the feeling wheel. And so, think of it this way. The Titanic, the, the Titanic. The, boy, why is that so hard for me? <laughs> the ship <laughs> was chugging along when they saw an iceberg on the surface of the water. It looked formidable. And yet, when they saw, what they saw was a smaller piece of the whole iceberg under the water. The iceberg on top of the water represents the emotion a person can see. Let's say it's anger. Below the surface, though, the iceberg is huge with all sorts of edges, sharp edges, and depth. It goes down really far into the ocean. The Titanic found that out because it got sliced. The ship. Water poured in it, and the ship sunk. We too see what is on the surface at times, don't we? We see it on the, we see what's on the surface and don't manage what is below the surface. We don't manage what is below it. If someone is angry, they are not f just feeling angry, they may be feeling inadequate, insignificant, anxious, sad, shame, and so on. These emotions are the ones underneath the surface. This is why it is necessary to say, okay, I'm angry, but what else am I feeling? What is going on below the surface of my anger? But these feelings, when identified, may be keys to what makes you angry. And the emotions are usually connected to a past experience that is linked with your current reality. That's a mouthful, isn't it? This taught you about emotions and what, what's going on with them underneath the surface. Can you imagine all that's going on inside you? <laughs> There's a lot there. There's a lot there. And it all depends on what experience you ex you've experienced in the past. It might have more emotions. Yeah. My hope today is that, I want to bring hope, is that you may start a journey if you are not already on one to identify and manage your emotions. I believe getting in tune with your emotions is what God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit would want you to do. Thus, let's start identifying our emotions and learning from them. This means you may experience pain. This means you may experience anxiety. This means you may, this whole thing on emotions right now, you're sitting in the surface and going, this is awkward. <laughs> Absolutely. It is awkward, right? But I believe it's part of our human being. I believe God cares for the whole, whole of us, and emotions are part of the whole of us. So, Think of tolerating your emotion, being uncomfortable, and monitoring the frustration of feeling this way. Again, think of tolerating your emotion, whatever it may be, being uncomfortable, and monitoring the frustration of feeling this way. You may feel sque squeamish. Whoa, I don't know what to do with that emotion. Uh, you might feel exposed naked-like when dealing with your emotions. Remember, you might be hiding that emotion for some time. It likes to be hid. <laughs> and so it doesn't want to be out there. And you to identify it and recognize it and do something with it and then start to manage it. Now, if you have experienced trauma, be careful how you unpack the experience. All right? So I'm not saying let's just unpack all this trauma that I've had right this second. Now, I think it needs to be unpacked, but let's see how we do it. I would ask you to look for counseling to adequately deal with these emotions of trauma. I don't want you to jump headlong into dealing with the trauma without having support. Okay? So this morning, 
I would like for you to think of a recent relational experience that was, un was comfortable or uncomfortable. You choose. I don't, want to get, I don't want you to go someplace you don't want to go. I'm not forcing anyone. I want you to think of something comfortable or uncomfortable that you've experienced. I want you to think of the emotions of that experience as you think about that experience. Take your time looking at the feeling wheel, an emotional, relational experience that you've had in recently. Think of that. So think of the emotions around that experience. Use the feeling wheel. It's in front of you. That's why I gave it to you. Take your time looking at the wheel. Identify your emotions. And I will give you a minute to look at the feeling wheel to do that. Go ahead. Look at that. Think of an experience that you've had relationally. Identify the main emotion and then think of the emotions underneath that emotion. Now let's look at the opposite side of that handout. So let's flip it over. I want you to observe these emotions externally, whatever that emotion was, in front of you. When necessary, take deep breaths to help you regulate what you you're feeling. So you have your emotion in front of you. Now experience your emotion as a wave coming and going. Don't push away your emotion. Accept it as it is. Don't judge it. It's not good, not bad. But don't hang on to your emotion, meaning don't internalize it. If you don't internalize it, you won't intensify your emotion. Take deep breaths to relax yourself and ground yourself. I usually teach my clients to breathe in through their nose and out their mouth. It relaxes the body and helps you deal with the emotion and feel calm. When not, uh, and so the next steps are very important too. Remember, you are not your emotion, and you don't have to necessarily act on your emotion. Remember that your emotion is neither bad nor good. Now you're on your way. You're on your way in working with your emotions. What would Jesus do with his emotions? I guarantee you, he used them. He used his intellect. He used his emotions. He used all of what God gave him to experience the life that he lived in his 33 years here on this earth. So I think Jesus... I want you to start giving your emotions a voice so you can adequately live into being a new creation, so responding rather than reacting to life. Again, responding rather than reacting to life. If you have emotions that need healing, then what work sensitively with these emotional, emotional parts. Find ways to ground and regulate your emotions without avoiding them. Find ways to ground and regulate them. My aim is to give you tools today that will lead you towards health in your emotions. This is no doubt what Jesus would want. He looks out over you just as he looked at Jerusalem and beckons you to come on the journey. Come on the journey and deal with the emotions that are already there, that are already inside you, because life is hard. Life is good. 
Things happen in life. Bruce Larson, in his book, There is a Lot More to Hell Than Not Being Sick, writes, A pastor I know told me about a lady who came to see him about joining the church. She said her doctor had sent her. Recently, she had a facelift, and when her doctor dismissed her, he gave her this advice. My dear, I have done an extraordinary job on your face, as you can see in the mirror. I have charged you a great deal of money, and you were happy to pay it. But I want to give you some free advice. Find a group of people who love God, will love you enough to help you deal with all the negative emotions inside of you. If you don't, you'll be back in my office in a very short time with your face in far worse shape than before. Go. Go now and be free from outward appearance. Deal with those emotions that are inside. We want to mask it on the outside, but we won't deal with what's inside. We want to clean up out here and not deal with what's in here. Go now. Be more authentic than you've ever been and join with the Holy Spirit on your emotional journey. Be free. Start to be free in this emotional realm emotional intelligence. Be free to manage your emotions and not allow them to manage you. Now, to be honest, the one standing up here preaching has emotions, and he's learning too. I think this will last to the day you die. All right? All I'm kind of pointing out this morning is that be on the journey with him. Be on the journey with him. It's okay to have emotions. They're there anyway. Might as well learn how to use them and learn how to use them well and manage them. Otherwise, they're going to come out anyway. Let me pray with you. Dear Jesus, thank you for emotions. Thank you for this journey that we have with you that we get to express ourselves in great joy. We think of the birth of Christ coming up in, in a month, and wow, there's such great joy in us that we will know that you have come in our midst and have coming to save us from our sins. Wow, that brings joy. And so let our emotions um, be what they are and help us deal with them and identify them and use them and manage them to help us in our lives so they don't injure, but they bring, um, they bring us creativity in our hearts and joy, uh, knowing that you're with us, you'll walk alongside us, whatever emotion comes. Thank you for hope. Thank you for life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. Uh, I've been thinking about Thanksgiving coming up, and so I chose this song. Uh, it's a song that I grew up singing at church and at school. It's When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings, name them one by one And it will surprise you what the Lord has done Count your blessings, name them one by one Count your blessings, see what God has done Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? 
Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Thank you, Dave, for helping us understand emotions. And as I was sitting, thinking here, yes, many times we think of emotions in a negative way. The phrase, oh, don't get so emotional. Or they're just emotional, which means they're out of control. That might be a part of it, but we were created with emotion. Emotions are a gift, are a blessing. We just talked about counting our blessings. It is how we use them that is important. And just like everything else in life, we were created with that, but the fall has put a curse on emotions as well. And so it's how we handle them. Um, as I was thinking, and the examples of Jesus' emotions um, are very helpful in his humanity. Even though divine in his humanity, he showed the emotions. Um, I also was thinking of this, this verse, and maybe I'm wrong in saying this, but what Paul says in Ephesians, be angry and sin not. I'm thinking, now, can we put any other emotion in there? Be joyful and sin not. <laughs> so this idea of the fall and things. So again, David, thank you for reminding us of that. The emotions are neither good nor, nor bad, but they're important. I think they bring a color to life. It's the color to life that makes it worth living. So again, thank you for that reminder. Um, and so as we go from, from here, um, Allow your emotions to be a part of who you are, but doing it in the correct way, if you will. For a benediction, I'd like to read from Romans 15, 13. And I think it kind of helps us in this area of emotion. Hear what uh, the writer says. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.